Hello YouTube and welcome to my Alatrion guide. Now I want to make it clear from the outset of this guide that I'm not going to be showing you the fastest way to kill an Alatrion. And I do realize that half of you probably just quit out of the video now. But what I am going to show you how to do is how to reliably rip Alatrion's wings, break his front claws and break his horns. And that's of course important because um, sky pierces or horn pluses um, webbings and claws, which you get from breaking his claws obviously, are all important constituents of his armor set and from his weapons. So if you want those good parts, especially the webbings, it's going to show you how to get them. Right, so I'll just rip through this reasonably briskly because there's a lot to cover. Um, first of all, this is the armor set you're going to be using, and the gun is the Island of the Titans, which is the ancient sun light bow gun. Uh, make sure you whack a silencer on when you're um, creating it. Um, the parts that we are going to be using are the barrage piercing which you get from getting a B rank on your training so I'm pretty sure you need to do all of them or it might just be one of them ah uh, someone could confirm that would be just fantabulous recoil reduction plus two in conjunction with the silencer is going to mean that you hit weakest level recoil which means you'll be able to fire crag and cluster shots without any recoil at all which is obviously going to be really handy here load up means you have to reload a little bit less often which is always nice gunnery master is a 50% boost to your crag shots damage and rapid shot plus one means that because this gun is rapid firing crag shots, now you get a third bullet. Um, I, went, I wanted to make a guide which didn't require massively difficult gear to get, and so the charm that we're using here is only, um, all you need is recoil plus three. So if you've got a three slot charm, then you can just chuck in three single recoil gems. This charm is recoil plus five, but as you can see with 17 points of recoil, it's two points more than I actually need. Um, and obviously, you know, the DLSU arms are really handy because they're a giant spike, which means if you run into any vampires during this quest, you can stake them. Alright, the items that we're going to be taking, books of combines for more ammo, and then make sure you bring the constituent elements of Crag 1, 2, 3, and Class 2. Um, bring 9 rounds each of, of the Crag shots, bring 3 Class 2, and bring 99 normal 3s. Um, and of course, don't forget your cool drinks because we're in the volcano. And bring healing items as appropriate. I've got 10 mega potions here, but if you want more, obviously bring them. Right. Ripping up to the guild hall. First, um, you don't need any whim skills to do this quest. But if you have feline bomber, that's going to be handy because it's about a 10% boost to your crag shots. And of course, more damage is always nice. Um, obviously, get your 150, 150 in terms of your health and stamina. And then jump over here, grab your last round quest. And we should be just about ready to go. Alright, now apologies, because I know that you guys have asked me to speak a little bit slower, but there's an awful lot to cover, so I might sort of rip through it pretty quickly. As soon as the battle starts, grab a cool drink and load your Crag level 1 shots. Um, fire into his head as much as you can, because every time you hit his head, um, you're going to be building up KO value. Um, the Crag shots will do the same um, amount of damage wherever you hit him, but obviously if he gets knocked out, then it's going to give you great chances to attack without worrying about retaliation. Anytime you don't feel like you have a safe opening, because rapid fire will leave you vulnerable, um, make sure you combine for more ammo. And anytime you do have an opening, but you can't hit the head, shoot the front legs. That'll help to break um, his front leg claws, and it's also going to mean, um, once you flinch him, that you've got some more free hits. The head hit zone is pretty generous in terms of KO value, so if you hit his neck like I've just done here, he's still going to take KO value and get knocked out pretty quickly. When you've knocked him out, load your Crag level 3, or level 2 if you run out of 3, and fire two full clips of four shots into his wings. You don't need to worry about hitting his wings too much in other times, because you're going to be ripping them pretty fast anyway. When he's um, recovered, switch back to your Crag level 1 shots. And if you can open your combo list um, before he roars, then it's going to mean you can combine ammo while, he's still, um, while you're still stunned. Right, he's going to charge at you quite a lot of the time, and the charges will either be straight at you, or like that one just there, they will curve slightly. Um, being able to read them is going to mean that you'll take less hits, which is going to mean less damage and an easier fight. A lot of the fight will just be charging back and forth. Um, if, you, if he's being very uncompliant and he's not giving you hit opportunities, then there's not a lot of time pressure in this fight, so you don't need to take chances. You can actually just wait for him to um, give you headshot openings. When he flies back like that, he'll quite often do a fireball with it, so just be really wary. And when he flies up like this, it, it's going to be really frustrating for melee users, but it's actually um, op more opportunity for us gunners. When he does that pullback and lightning smash three times in a row attack, he's always going to taunt afterwards, which means that you can get um, some free headshots in. If he's just done it once, then he's not going to taunt afterwards, so be careful of that. 
when he flies past you like that, it's going to be another free chance to shoot him because he'll, by the time you turn around to recover, then you will have recovered from your crag level 1 recoil. As you can see, he's doing the pullback lightning smash thing attack three times, and he's going to taunt, and he's going to get shot in the head. Now you can actually knock him out about three times um, if you're quick enough, because the KO value will degrade over time, but if you're quick enough, you can knock him out three times during this battle for lots of free shots. Um, you can sidestep the ice uh, shards that he fires at you like I just did, but it's probably better not to risk it and to just um, roll away from them. If he does his um, ice shard summon like he's just done there, don't worry about sprinting, you can just run in any single direction it's not going to hit you. Alatrion has landed now, but he's actually still in flight mode, which means that he's going to be taking a bit more fire damage, he'll take a bit more dragon damage as well, and it means that um, his fire-based attacks are actually now going to be firing lightning instead. If I'd had a bit more um, time, I would have photoshopped a troll face onto that rock just then. What a jerk. You've got about 29 shots of crag level 1, which is going to be heaps. You can actually roll Alatrion's roars without any evade skills, but um, you can always recover after he's roared before you can do anything, so you don't need to worry about too much. When he's in flight mode, even if you flash him out of the sky, he's um, going to remain in flight mode until he chooses not to be, so um, don't stress about it too much, you can still attack him really easily. And as you can just seen, he can do that pullback and smash attack very very fast, so be really wary. Knock him out of the sky is actually quite a lot of fun though, and if you're playing multiplayer, your teammates will love you if you're able to do that. Each successive um, KO that you do requires more KO damage, so don't be discouraged if it takes a little while to knock him out the second and third times. When he pulls back and flies forward like that, if you've dodged, if you've seen it coming and dodged out of the way, then you can usually get a sneaky reload in. And he's knocked out of the sky again. He's actually going to um, be knocked out when he stands up again. And so you want to fire some more crag shots into his wings. Now if you watch closely, at the um, end of the second volley, you'll see the chunks flying off, and which means that you've broken the wings right at the 5 minute mark. If you can see the little chunks flying off there. Right, now even after you've done that, you're still going to want to continue to um, crag him until you run out of crag shots. And then you begin phase 2, which I'm showing here. Phase 2 is your clust phase, and um, it's not massively effective, but you do have a uh, recoilless gun here, and it's actually quite a lot of fun to crag him, to, sorry, to cluster him. When he does that two lightning summon under your feet thing that he's just done there, he's always going to taunt afterwards, just like with the three lightning pullback smash thing attack. And I'm just, I'm so good at naming his attacks, obviously. There's not really a whole lot of strategy to the um, to the clustering. Cluster his neck if you can, so you'll hit his horns. Um, otherwise, clust his front legs so you can break them in to get the flinch. Um, or otherwise, just sort of shoot him anywhere. Now he's done the pullback lightning smash three times, and he's going to taunt. And so you're obviously going to load him full of crack. Clust. Sorry. When he's in flight mode, um, he's actually just changed the ground mode here, but I'd missed that when I was doing this video. When he's in flight mode, he will actually take a fair amount of dragon damage, so take some dragon shots for novelty. And this is the third and final phase of this battle. After your crag and clust, you're going to start normaling him to death. Normal 3 is not a perfect strategy for this fight, and if it was, and ideally you'd have normal up and exploit it, but, you know, just do what you can. Um, you can see the second horn has just been broken there. Um, his normal shot hit zone is very poor, um, as in he doesn't take a lot of shot type damage, but if you can't hit his head, aim for his tail. And you should have no time pressure in this quest, so don't feel like you need to risk any shots. Um, his, both of his horns should be broken by this point, and his, um, you should have managed to cluster his legs, so they should be gone as well. And there you have it. Alash got killed in 1755, with both horns, both front legs, and his wings all broken. Right, um, sorry if I've sort of gone through that quite quickly. Um, hopefully I've managed to speak a little bit louder. Um, if you have any questions or if you feel like you know, I haven't explained anything very well, then just let me know in the comments and I'll show my best to help you out. I uh, hope that was useful um, and I hope you enjoyed. Miserion out.